Hello there Mike. So in this video, in this second video, we are going to explore about the three principles of looping. As I've already stated on the process street checklist earlier, I stated that um, I'm going to make a video about these three principles because obviously those wall of text that I've written on there is, I don't know, maybe rather difficult to understand or too long. So hopefully the video, video medium, I hope it will be easily understood. Okay. So in this video, we are going to create a simple company logo right from the beginning to the end, utilizing all these three principles of looping. All right. So let's get started already. <coughs> Okay, so create a new composition as usual, of course, and let's make let's name this com main as usual. When I name a composition, the main composition should be main comp, and the settings are all perfect. I think twelve eighty by seven twenty square pixel. Oh, this is frame rate, because previously on the previous video, as you have seen already, the playback is rather glitchy, even though the method itself is perfect. So I think right now I'm going to record it at 60 FPS and the composition itself is as is at 60 FPS so that you can see clearly how smooth it is when looping. All right. And then the duration, five seconds, I think it's good. All right, everything is good. Perfect. All right. So now we are going to create a logo. Uh, I think. So uh, let's create, uh, I don't know, a, a, co a coffee logo maybe, yeah. A company making coffee. So yeah, a coffee logo. So we have, yeah, obviously a coffee will need a cup. So first of all, we are going to create the assets. All right. All right, so we have a cup the cup and then the water okay so first of all we're going to create the assets using the inherent after effects shape layers tool as you can see here okay so let's just create the cup right away oh first of all we need to enable the roto bezier so that we have automatic curving on the path itself on the vectors there as you can see it's automatically curving there you go Nothing too fancy, just a simple cup. A simple, rudimentary, symbolic cup like this. Alright. And pull it down a little bit. And colorize it. Let's colorize it using a gradient. Uh, I don't know. A radial gradient so that it looks even better. The coffee cup is good. Alright, that's great. And then let's create the handle of the cup. Uh, please bear with me, Michael, because we are just creating the assets right from scratch. But don't worry, this is not going to take long, okay? Because we're just creating simple shapes here. All right. There you go, disable the fill. And let's create the stroke. So this is the handle of the cup. Let's make it gradiented as usual. There you go. That's the handle. And let's put it somewhere over here, down below. I don't know, I think it's too big. Something like this would be great. All right, nothing too fancy. All right, so this is the cup. And let's create the water, of course. A cup of coffee needs water, right? So we must create the water too. A flat water. So we have disabled the roto bezier there so that there is no curving. Because a, gla a water surface should be flat. And then disable the stroke. Let's disable the stroke and enable the fill. And let's make it pure black as a coffee is. All right. There you go. So we have the cup of coffee with a black coffee in it. And now, so this is completely done using shape layers. And if you ask me, Michael, um, in fact, 
when you ask me, I'm not at all experienced or at all know how to use Adobe Illustrator because right from the beginning when I learn After Effects, it is always the shape layers that I turn to when I want to create cartoony shapes or vector shapes. And I kid you not, this simple shape layer tool is really underrated and I believe is really, really powerful. Believe me, it can create numerous shapes, various shapes, either simple or complex, depending on your skill when using the shape layers. As for me, I'm really comfortable with using the shape layers, so I don't need Adobe Illustrator. Okay, let's get uh, to the actual job here. So we have already created the cup, the water, and... Of course, we need a name, the company name. No logo is complete without a name, so let's create the company name, something like... Uh, a coffee, a coffee company. Copy. Yeah, I think coffee, something like this would be great. Coffee, something so easily remembered. I don't know. And then scale it up. Make it down like this. All right. And there you go. All right. So we have the assets done. All right. And now regarding the animated object. So what shall we animate? What is going to be animated? Is it the water? Or is it the text? I think I'm going to make, I don't know, a bouncing object. So this is what we are going to utilize to illustrate the three principles of looping better. All right. So I think there will be a bouncing object that will loop back and forth, uh, not back and forth, that will loop seamlessly forward. All right. So let's create this object, something like, I don't know, a circle, a simple circle like this. And let's color it white <coughs> with a gradient as usual. All right. Perfect. And let's center the anchor point. Center anchor point. And co coffee, yeah. I think it's perfect when we put it over here. There you go, the bouncing of the ball. There you go. So this is the ball. So I think the animation should be something like this ball will bounce on the cup. Bounce. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. So this is obviously the first frame. The three principles of looping, we have three principles. The first principles stated that the first frame and the last frame should have identical or nearly identical imageries between them. Okay. The second principle says that we must go back one frame from the last frame as the end of the animation. So we cut back one frame as the end of the animation to avoid the slight pause we have okay and then the third principle states that uh, whatever animation we are doing whatever animation we are doing in between the first and last frames whatever ha is happening there we as animator have the responsibility to make a gradual transition into the last frame. So whatever animation that is happening, we must create that gradual transition animation into the last frame, which essentially means that uh, we must make a gradual transition into the first frame too, because the first and last frames are similar. Okay, so those are the three principles. So first of all, let's get to the first principle. The first and last frames should have identical imageries between them. So this is the first frame, as you can see. This is the first frame. And the ball is right here, and we want to animate it bouncing, right? And whatever happens there, the ball will return to the state here, which means the last frame. So the first and last frame should have identical frames. So we know that this is the first frame, and the last frame should be identical to this. We know that already, okay? So now, <clears throat> let's get to the third principle, which means we are going to animate this already. All right, so we are going to animate this ball bouncing back and forth. There, 
keyframe the position property and I think the animation should end nothing too short and nothing too long would be uh, I don't know maybe around this one yeah maybe that's great okay so this is where the animation should end which means that this is the last frame all right this is the last frame so we have the first frame here with the appearance exactly like this the ball in this position so the last frame exactly should be similar too okay that's the first principle now the third principle the third principle we jump back we jump one principle okay the third principle says whatever animation you're doing whatever movement of the object eventually it must gradually change into the last frame okay so we are going to animate this ball to illustrate the point all right we're going to animate it bouncing probably just like that <clears throat> bouncing back and forth nothing too fancy there you go and probably go over here I think or maybe over I think it's nearing the end of the frame which should be here I think all right doesn't matter all right so as you can see here the ball is already animated like that right so this is the third principle whatever animation you're doing which means this bouncing whatever animation this is eventually the ball must return to the original state eventually the animation must gradually change into the last frame which means the first frame here because the last and first frames are identical so we have the ball right at here right now it is our job as animator to make this gradual change into the last frame which means we have to move the ball right from this position into the last frame here the last position which means the beginning position too right there you go so there you have it the ball should be looping there you go it's looping already but it's very very crude very rough okay first of all we are going to make the ball bounces more beautifully right so we select all the keyframes and go to keyframe interpolation and change the keyframes into Bezier. Essentially, we are making handles on these keyframes so that we can manipulate the curves. All right. So as you can see here, uh, this handle should be like this to simulate bouncing. Right. And this handle should be like this. This handle should be like this so we have curving movement yeah this one is not curving yet okay so it must curve like this I think yep that will be smooth but this one is not smooth so we have to smooth it out too which means that we have to make it like uh, I don't know maybe something like this is it perfect is it a good curve let's see there you go I think it's good right all right so let's see if the bouncing is good oh there you go it's already smooth but unfortunately there is a difference in speed there as you can see when the ball reaches this position it slows down too much and with the, when the ball goes here which is a large distance distance covered the ball speeds up very much right so to avoid that we can select all these keyframes right click and rove across time this this will redistribute the speed between keyframes so that the object now moves in a constant speed there you go all right now when we animate it ah oh, there you go it's good 
Yep. It's already smooth, I think. Good. All right. So there you have it. A good, perfectly looping animation. Okay. So we have covered the first principle. We have covered the third principle. The third principle, okay. <laughs> Maybe you get bored for me stating this all the time again and again. <clears throat> The third principle, whatever animation you're doing, it is our job as animator to make that gradual change into the last frame. So as you can see here already, we have made this animation the bouncing animation. We have made the ball right in this position. And now it is our job as animator to make the gradual transition or gradual animation into the last frame, which means this position over here. So we make this movement over here. Okay. And now, the second principle, we go back one principle. The second principle states that whatever, I mean, uh, if you have done a looping animation, then go back one frame. Go back one frame, which means cut back one frame as the, the end of your looping animation. So essentially here, as you can see, because the, the last frame and the first frames Okay, these are identical frames, so we have a slight pause between these two frames when the, when the animation is played back. So when you play this back, there's a slight pause. As you can see here, for example, there you go. So the animation ends right there at the last frame. So let's play it back. As you can see, maybe, yeah. I think it's not too obvious in 60 frames per second, there you can see. But I think it's slightly, very, very slightly, there is a pause in here when the object is supposed to go to the beginning state, to the first state. There's that slight pause, very slight, I think. I think we can change the composition settings to 30, 30 frames per second, so that we can see it better, maybe. Let's see, there you go. It's not, it's not obvious here either. Maybe 24 FPS. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. You can see there. There is a very, I think it's now very noticeable. There's a pause there, right here. The ball pauses, right? There's a break there on the movement, okay? That is because the last frame is identical with the first frame. So essentially the playhead is repeating two frames, two similar frames. So we have a slight pause there. So that, there you go, the slight pause, bang, bang, there you go, the slight pause, okay? <clears throat> so to eliminate this problem, as rule number two stated, because the first and last frames are identical, we need to cut back one frame this is the end, the current end of the animation, which causes the pause, the slight pause. So we have to go back one frame and then cut back the animation end right there. So that is where the animation should end. And now when we play it back in 24 FPS, as you can see there, there is no pause as previously. Of course, it's choppy because it's 24 FPS, but there is no pause like the previous one. See that? All right, so that is the second principle. Let's get this to the previous 60 FPS. 60 FPS, all right. <clears throat> and there you go. This is already the correct end of our animation, okay? Previously, it was right here. The end of the animation is right here at frame, I mean, at time code one second and 23 frames. But now the correct one is 1 second and 22 frames, which means 1 frame less. All right. So now let's loop it and see if it's... Yeah. Oh my, it's indeed very smooth. Yeah. Very, very smooth there. All right. Okay, so I think we have already successfully covered 
the first, the third, and the second principle of the looping animation. All right. But there is one exception to the rule regarding the first rule, regarding the first principle. The first principle states that the first frame and the last frame should be identical. But when we have a disappearing object, an object that is animated but eventually disappears, that is, it is not entirely feasible. It is not feasible for the entire loop, which means that it disappears at some time or the other then the first principle doesn't apply. But this is just an exception to the rule. For example, here we have uh, a flashing, I, I think. Let's illustrate the point by making a flashing animation here. A flashing animation. All right, so let's create another shape layer. I think an ellipse would do better. Something like this, probably. All right, let's fill it, probably something like that, and let's duplicate this content over here, create an intersection, merge paths operation, and then inter exclude intersection, and let's scale this one down just ever so slightly, something like that probably, I don't know. Yep. And place it below, just like that. Reposition it. Okay, there you have it. And then change the color to something bright because it is a flashing animation. Obviously, we need something bright. There you go. Okay. So we are going to make this object uh, flashing, which means, I think, is the the opacities oh yeah because the opacity is already 100% we can only reduce it so, so the scale will be increased okay scale and transparency okay so let's keyframe these and let's go to another area like that probably okay and then make it oh i'm sorry transform center anchor point in layer content so that the scaling happens right from the center. There you go. Make it so big and the opacity reduced to 0% like that. All right. So essentially we have this uh, flashing animation like this. There you go. There you go. See that? Now, as you can see already, this is a perfect seamless looping, right? Why is that? Well, because the object disappears. Even though, as you can see here, the first frame here is not identical at all with the last frame. There is no yellow thing over here, the last frame. There's nothing there. So the first principle is not being followed. But it's okay because the object itself is disappearing. So that's it. When there is an object that disappears, on the duration or the length of the looping when the object disappears then it's very easy you don't have to think about how, how to loop this object whatever da 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 it's very simple just let it disappear and then loop right back from the beginning right so that's it it's a very simple technique to loop an object so whenever you have some logo animation that you don't want to think too uh, difficult like how to loop this thing just make it disappear and then loop it back, right? It's very easy. So there you go. That's the looping animation. Perfect. It's good already, I think. All right, that's perfect. Um, I think, yeah. What about the water? The water itself should be moving, right? This logo is, feels like so dead because only one object, uh, actually two objects are animated. Yeah, I think the water should be animated too. The coffee water, the black coffee. There you go. To achieve this, we can use the effect. Stylize and roughen edges. Okay, there you go. Increase. Increase the border. Something like, like a bubbling water, probably. This effect essentially creates this random texture. A random pattern on the surface of the water here. 
right? But as you can see, it's still static. Okay, it's still static. So we can animate it by using the evolution here. So we enable the evolution keyframe. All right, go to the last frame. And let's make it just one complete circle, which means one complete, uh, there you go, one complete evolution, right? So as you can see, it is now animated. The water surface is animated. There you go, it's animated, right? It's bubbling water, a coffee should be bubbling, right? <clears throat> but when we loop it, as you can see here, when we loop it, there is that snapping change. Because essentially this is a random texture. This is a, a very completely random texture and completely random animation. So it is not looping. As you can see, there is a snap there on the surface of the coffee. So how can we make it loop seamlessly? Well, this is the beauty of After Effects. So, uh, some or all of the effects in After Effects, when it comes to fractal principle, so so effects that utilize the fractal principle, they have this control here called evolution options. Not only do they have evolution control, usually they have evolution control, but they also have the evolution options too. So roughen edges, the roughen edges effect is just one of the many effects that utilizes the fractal principle, as you can see fractal here. Other effects include the turbulent noise and then the fractal noise and the lighting, probably lighting, lightning, lighting effects, I think. So we have these two controls here. The first one is to animate <coughs> the fractal so that it has some random animation to it. And the second one is to loop that random animation seamlessly and perfectly. That is the beauty of it. So let's do this. Okay. So yeah, I think Let's enable the cycle evolution checkbox. And then here we want to in a, uh, input a value of 1. Because essentially we have input a value of 1 in here. As you can see, we have keyframed to the maximum value of 1 for the evolution animation. So in this control here, we have to input the value of 1 too, similar. Okay. So essentially what this means is that whenever the evolution reaches one complete revolution, which means one here, then the animation will loop perfectly and seamlessly. There is no jarring snapping. Okay, so let's see the effect here. Let's play back the animation. And yes, the end of the animation is already correct. So let's see. There you go. The bubbling coffee is perfectly animated, seamlessly looping. All right. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful there, the bubbling coffee. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Any effects that have fractal principle will have these two controls here. So maybe we can illustrate the point further by, uh, I don't know, making the background more lively, I think. Let's see. So let's create this solid. Now we are going to use the fractal noise effect that has the same evolution controls there so that you can see even though the pattern and the animation is completely random we can still make it seamlessly loop all right so this is the red solid and let's apply an effect called fractal i think it's in where is it fractal noise Right on, da, da 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 Is it in simulation, maybe? Fractal noise. No, 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 no. Why don't we just search it over here? Yeah, fractal noise. There you go. Here. So, we're going to apply fractal noise to the background. There you go. So, here we have this pattern over here. Turbulent smooth. Uh, Complexity is 4, contrast is increased a little bit, noise type is soft linear is good, and the transform, hmm. subsettings, subscaling, I don't know about this, 
There you go, you have it. The evolution and the evolution options control. So as you can see, if we solo this layer, this is a completely random and completely, uh, yeah, completely jumbled pattern or texture. Right? <clears throat> now wait a second. I think the texture appearance is rather not good. So let's see. Ooh, smeary. Oh, that looks very organic, very natural. Swirly. Wow, even better. I think, I think this is good for the coffee, right? It looks like a water or some mochaccino or something. Okay, so let's apply this to the to the coffee service here. Uh, the coffee, coffee. Where is it? Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. The coffee service has this fractal noise applied but it's too intense so we have to reduce something over here like maybe the contrast or the brightness yeah the brightness would be great so we're reducing it and then yeah I think it's already great let's see if we can the random seed mm, looks very very good very good indeed okay so now let's animate the evolution as usual as the, as the previous Robin edges effect so let's keyframe the evolution here <coughs> let's go to the last frame and make one evolution right so now it is animated like this as you can see it is animated right but I think it's still too much right we need to reduce the brightness even more, I guess. Hmm. And the contrast is re is increased. Or or maybe two. What about two evolutions? Evolute too fast, maybe. Two evolutions. Yep, it's too fast, not good. So let's just stay at one. All right, let's see. Hmm. Yep. You can see there that the animation is not looping there on the fractal noise effect here. It's not looping, right? It's jarring. That's why we have to use this second control here, the evolution options, as the previous effect we've already learned. Enable cycle evolution and make this one. There you go. Now when we play it back, it must loop seamlessly. There you have it. Perfect. All right. But now the yeah, the rough and edges effect is not so obvious because the fractal is too fast. Maybe we can increase this border. Something like that maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it looks rather comical, but well, well, well. I think we need to decrease the fractal noise. The opacity should be decreased ever so slightly, just to make a slight animation there. There you have it. I think it's more acceptable. Now you have it. Even though the animation and the pattern is completely random, here and here on the surface and on the coffee itself, we have a perfectly seamlessly looping animation. All right, and that is because of these two controls here: evolution and evolution options. Okay, there you have it, Mike. I think it's already too long. This video is so essentially we have already covered the three principles of looping. Okay, the three principles. I don't need to repeat it again. And we have already covered also that a flashing or a disappearing object is very easy to make to loop because, well, it just disappears and then you can just go back to the first state again. It's very easy. So a disappearing object, an animated object that is disappearing, does not adhere to the first principle of the looping principle, all right? And then we have already covered also the the way we can make completely, perfectly random texture, pattern, and animation, and yet still making it loop seamlessly. 
using the evolution options control. Well, I think that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to discuss about the rotation that you have asked, the rotation, how to loop a rotation, and then how to loop multiple objects that move or animate at different, uh, at different motions or at different speeds. So yeah, those things will be covered in the next video. <clears throat> okay, so that's it about now. Thank you.